She has been used heavily in big games. She got the start against UCLA the first weekend, and uh, she has been stellar. Roughed up a little bit as of late, but she's a force to be reckoned with. She'll face Jada Coleman and then Tiare Jennings. The two All-Americans are back to back at the top of the order and they induce the pop-up with Coleman one down. How about the scouting report for Tegan? Well, she's got a lot of velocity. She's gonna be upper 60s, lower 70s. She's got that double break with that rise ball. It's got a little curve, so it'll come in, it'll go away, it'll go up. But she's also worked really hard on a drop ball for that vertical separation. That's one of the things that Mike White has said is gonna be very important for Tegan Kanvan to be able to hit the lower half of the strike zone and then get that swing and miss at the top half of the strike zone. Freshman out of West Des Moines. Jennings looking for a gap and drifting over to make the catch is Ashton Maloney. Two down. Quick work for Tegan to get two of the biggest hitters in the country out first time up as you check out the starting lineup for the Sooners. Kinsey Hansen and Riley Boone, the first two games were at the bottom of the order, but they've been so good that Patty Gasso moved them up to four and five in the lineup today to try and spark their offense. Held to seven runs through the first two games. That's well below their season average of nine runs per game coming into this series. There's Coach Gasso. 30 years now with seven national championships. They are sitting on a three-peat and trying for an unprecedented fourth national championship in a row this year. A couple close pitches to the zone, both called balls, but that last one's the changeup. That's the pitch that is also going to be important along with that drop ball and rise ball for Kavan. Inside to Alyssa Brito. 4-11 on the season. She's one for six so far in this series. Third year at Oklahoma on a big breakout last season, a first-team All-American. After she started out her career at Oregon. And there's the Brito bomb guy again. He's out there in uh, center field. Almost looks like a burrito. Burrito. <laughs> we both are thinking about food. A burrito or a bomb, I can't tell which. Oh, and she draws the walk. Two out base runner here for the Sooners in the first. Kinsey Hansen, one for three on Friday, and then two hits yesterday. She was the one that uh, started what they hoped was going to be a game-winning rally in the seventh. What a job by Sitlali Gutierrez to hold yes. the Sooners to just one run in the win yesterday. If nothing else, guys, we are seeing the depth and the variety of both of these pitching staff. So there are a lot of strategic moves that Mike White and Patty Gasso can make, especially come NCAA tournament time. Yeah, they all attack the strike zone in different ways, especially for Texas. A lot of diversity on that staff. Checked foul by Hanson, 0-2. Well, a lot of times we talk about, you know, missing barrels by going up and down. You see the rise ball and the drop ball, but really what Gutierrez did such a great job of is using that curveball to just miss the barrel jamming and off the end of the bat. It, she didn't get a whole lot of strikeouts or even a lot of swing and miss. Call strike three on Hanson. Bella Dayton to start things off. Bunts one foul. The scouting report for Kelly Maxwell. And she's going to be in the mid-60s. So she has more spin than speed, and she's going to use that spin up-down curve. She can mix very well. It's that high whiff rate and chase rate that makes her so effective. And she's using a lot more pitches this year. Last year, she was a lot of rise ball. She's also implementing a drop ball this year, working with new pitching coach Jen Rocha. 69 and 20 in her career. And she was about right on pace uh, in game one on Friday night, Michelle. Her, her 
K rate is about 30% up and down the lineup for yeah. seven innings. And, and so those 114 pitches she threw in game one, 67 of those were strikes. And that's really the key is that she throws the vast majority. You want to be 60 to 70% strikes in your pitch count. And she does that. No strike out here, but the ground out instead, one away. Let's revisit that. Making that ball disappear and miss barrels. And that's got to be the goal for Texas is contact, being able to attack her early, which now we've seen both hitters from Texas swinging first pitch in the zone. Because you look at first pitch strikes. I mean, she's coming at you 56% of the time. She's going to give you something good to hit because then the swing and miss and the K rate kicks in after that. Here's Julie Mitchell. There's a swing miss. Check out the lineup for Texas. Vivi Martinez and Katie Stewart back to back in the order. They had the big hits yesterday. Martinez, terrific so far in the series. She went three for three yesterday. So huge for the Longhorns to break through. Their confidence last night to get a win that they can take with them moving forward. Very good chance that these two could collide again in both the Big 12 and the NCAA tournaments as Maxwell gets her first strikeout, two down. Mia Scott now in the number three spot in the lineup. That's a pitch that Kelly Maxwell can get called against these lefties. That's a curveball off the plate. It's such a hard pitch because it starts as a strike and then moves away from these left-handed barrels. Mia has reached in 22 of her last 24 games. Had a hit, a walk, and a run scored in the win last night. Coming into this series, she'd only struck out four times all year, but then Maxwell got her twice on Friday night. Both and times on the changeup. And look at her K rate is well below average. One of the toughest in the country to strike out. Two and two here. Base hit. Pulls that through the right side. Has reached now in 23 of her last 25. Brings up Reese Atwood. One of three players in the country coming into the weekend with over 50 RBI. She added another one Friday night. 0-2 yesterday. First pitch swinging at 65 miles an hour from Kelly Maxwell. And she's someone that made adjustments in that Friday night game in game. Struck out her first bat at bat on the rise ball. Ended up doubling her last at bat. On a pitch up in the zone. They were trying to come into her. And Texas already making adjustments, seeing Maxwell now second game. Didn't get their first hit until the fifth inning in game one. Yes, Scott here in this first. And they only had one hit all night with two outs. And here we are in that situation, 0-2 count. Swing and a miss, and Maxwell wins that bout. Riley Boone. A mainstay in the nine spot in the order, but interesting here for the second game in a row. Big shakeup for Patty Gasso as she moves Boone up to the five spot. She's got that 457 batting average, so when you see that in the nine hole, you're like, wow. 
<laughs> I mean, they do call her the party starter. Yes. And <laughs> it is often the case in her at-bats that she does start a little something-something. Well, and this is where you want her. She's leading off the inning. That's really what it's all about once the game starts. Right? Everyone's coming up in a different hole to start the inning. Inducing another pop-up. Martinez at short. One down. So far in this series, Smitty's pitchers are keeping Mendoza's bats quiet to this point. These two came in <laughs> with the top two batting averages in all the land. Right. Uh, so Mendoza rooting for a little more action. No, no. The who plate. has won the weekend? I, oh, the, the outfielders. outfielders. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we go. I believe there's a saying that power pitching shuts down power hitting. There's a reason you guys have a big circle around you. <laughs> and it is. Because uh -huh. <laughs> you're special. You're special. Here's Cassidy Pickering. So freshman against freshman right here. How quiet her hands are. Not quiet on the swing. And the connection. She's going to try for two and she'll get there. And then the pose from Pickering with the double. I loved this freshman, the way that she swings the bat. We talk about her hands, her lower half being quiet. She kind of has that front toe pointed open, but watch the power. I mean, it's a simplicity of her just getting barreled a ball, and you don't see a big, huge swing, but it's a big bat when she connects. It's a hard hit ball. Single turned into a double. OU's fourth extra base hit of the series, and Pickering has two of them. So first taste of uh, Red River for her, and she's coming through. Here's Sid Sanders. Coming inside to Sydney. 0 for 4 in the series, but with a couple of walks. Pulled down the line, good backhand by Mia Scott. She has been solid at third base, two down. It's a great play. Mia Scott, a lot of this is positioning as well. Texas has done a good job of following the glove, knowing where there's opportunities to move more into the five, six hole or have to guard the line. And Mia Scott right on the line there, nice backhand to play for the out. That'll bring up Alina Torres. One well, of the biggest key against these big OU righties is to get them inside, to not allow them to extend. That's why we've seen so many ground ball plays over the weekend to Mia Scott and Vivi Martinez. Foul tip. 0 oh and 2 as Kavan gets in front. Kavan has been good. The eight batters she's faced, six first pitch strikes. How about the day this could be for the folks in Des Moines and Dowling Catholic High School? Kavan used to play some hoops with one Caitlin Clark in her younger days and attended the same high school as Caitlin. Of course, Clark getting ready for the national championship coming up here at the top of the hour for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And Tegan starting out. And then she laid down a beautiful drag bunt for her last hit. Got the infield single. <laughs> Oklahoma has been able to jump out to the lead in each of the first two games. Let's see if Texas can flip that script. Well, Maxwell's really pitching these lefties hard. It's that backdoor curveball. Throws it at their front hip. Bends it back into the zone. Got her to chase upstairs and out of the zone. Third strikeout in the first six she has seen. 
excuse me, five she's seen. Yeah, this is coming from that left side. This is going to be moving from left to right and also up. So it's breaking a couple different planes. And when you have that movement through left to right and up and down, it's just tough to barrel up. She's already gone 0-2 on four of the first five mm -hmm. batters she's seen. And a 1-0 count here to Katie Stewart. Two and oh. Katie followed that Martinez double with a run scoring double of her own in the win last night. Those coming in the fourth inning. And Katie Stewart more toward the front of the box. You can see some of the righties for Texas. Middle of the box toward the front, trying to catch that movement of Maxwell's before it really starts to break. It's a little more difficult for left-handed pitchers to throw that way. Maxwell battles back two and two. Great hold, absolutely. And, and, and it's hitting off Maxwell is almost like hitting off Kat Osterman. You have a lefty with a lot of movement. You have to assume that every pitch is going to be a strike and you're going to go for it until you read the spin on it and you read ball. Because if you give up on it early, that ball's going to come right back into the zone. Full count. Did not go. First free pass for Texas, uh, their second base runner. That's exactly, Smitty, what Katie Stewart's doing on this. Watch her yes, 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 no. Holds back just barely, but you see her full legs triggering, ready to swing, then recognizes that spin, holds up. Here's Leanne Good, who gets the start at second base today. Sophomore from San Antonio. 0 for 1 Friday night, drew a walk, and then uh, only played some defense last night. No! 0 and 2. So an All-American at Oklahoma State was Kelly Maxwell, and now coming over to Oklahoma. Here's the difference. You see a lot fewer rise balls, a lot more drop balls in her repertoire. It's a lot more mix, more video this year, really looking at what hitters are doing against her. Hanson gets the block. She's working with the Johnny Bench uh, award winner for best catcher in the country last year. She has a wall back there. Nothing's getting by her. Let's update you on the uh, chest protector tape. Not only is it the blue <laughs> vertical, but it is much wider today. So we've seen blue one strip, blue two strip vertical. We've also seen red vertical and red horizontal, horizontal. correct? Horizontal. Just red horizontal. Just red oh, vertical. just red, yeah. no yeah. red vertical. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got to gotta get that right. Don't Allegedly wanna... for focus. Um, I, I think the red was for fire. Because that was Oh, when... focus or fire. Yeah. <laughs> Throw the heat. We also wonder if it's Montessori. a reminder to split the strike zone, either north, Left south, or, right or east, or, west. Yeah. All kinds of conspiracy theories out there, no doubt. 2-2. <laughs> two, two. Got her. Punch out for Maxwell, that is number four, two down. First one looking. Rise ball in the outer half. But again, that pitch, it's not just going up, it's starting off the plate. It's blending back into the plate as it's going up. 
Well, the difference is throwing that pitch for a strike because we've seen really great holds on taking the rise that ends up out of the zone. And when so you pick up rise ball spin, especially with two strikes, you're thinking, uh-uh, I'm not chasing this pitch. But right there, she threw it top of the zone for a strike. That changes the entire game, two strikes for any hitter. Caden Henry. Another one of the freshmen who has cracked the starting lineup out of Dickinson, Texas. And I am impressed with her in the outfield. I mean, I know we've seen it, but the, the, the relay, but to me, the diving catches, and she made one at the wall as well, took away what would have been two doubles from Oklahoma last night. Tough to track Maxwell right now. One, two count. Henry's a shade under 400 for the season with some pop. Showing good patience, trying to make uh, Maxwell throw more pitches today. She was very efficient Friday night. Well, that's the difference of facing the same pitcher in the same weekend. You know, you got to mix your pitches as a, on the pitching side, but as a hitter, you're you're offended by the fact that there wasn't more contact, that there was so much swing and miss. Guaranteed, they've been watching video and different approach already. Yeah, and you know what pitches you're hunting. You know which ones you're like. There's the chances of me barreling this up are not great, so you've got to know which zone that you're hunting pitches in. And when you see it, you cannot quit on it. Mike White, a great pitcher himself in his playing days. Sixth year now at Texas, including a trip to the championship series against Oklahoma two years ago. They are on the short list of teams this year that have the best chance to take down the Sooners and prevent the four-peat in the postseason. Just out in front of it. It's a change up, and Henry does a good job of, of catching that. If she could have waited just a split longer, there's a good chance she could have driven that one a long way. A lot more pitches for Maxwell here in this inning. Called strike three, got Henry. Three strikeouts of Vaughn and Kelly Maxwell looking sharp so far in the circle today. Ella Parker to start things off. Nine and then the top of the order. Ella oh, Parker with one of the coolest uncles out there. Dave Roberts, the manager of the Los Angeles Dodgers. If you know Dave Roberts. Oh, is this right on cue for Uncle Dave? You betcha. Ella Parker, solo shot to open up the third. Sweetest person with a sweet swing, Jess. <laughs> Uncle Dave. Wow. In Chicago right now playing the Cubs, and I'm sure he is super proud because this ball was absolutely smoked. And by the way, Ella Parker, as a freshman, so well coached coming in, but an understanding of the strike zone. She waits to get a pitch that she can drive, and this is her sweet spot. Anything waste or below, because you talk about the power. By the way, this got out of here. She was like three steps out of the batter's box. That's how quick it got out. That almost left the yard entirely. <laughs> Ella Parker. Third game in a row here now that Oklahoma has jumped in front. That is her seventh of the season and her first hit of the series. And it's interesting, too, because the freshmen, when they match up against other freshman pitchers, they've seen them in travel yeah. ball. It's almost more of an advantage for the freshmen going against each other than it, the sophomores or the upperclassmen. So I love the way that she comes out. And it's just and, uh, they score explosive. a lot off the uh, big oh, yeah. bat, Smitty. 45% of their total runs this year, long ball. Induced. That was the 80th home run of the year for the Sooners. And and the frequency, right? They have homered in, I think it's about 92% of yeah. all their games. But it also says a lot about Texas in the series, only a second home run yeah. in three games. Mm -hmm. Back 
to the top now, Jada Coleman. Well, and you knew there was the possibility. Tegan Kavan being more of a rise ball pitcher than Mac Morgan is. Lali Gutierrez, they're more down in the zone. So with that ability to throw through the upper half of the zone, you knew that Kavan potentially could be susceptible to the long ball. Yeah, yesterday was just the fourth game this year that they did not hit a home run. And I'm back at it here today. Outside to Coleman, full count. She walks as good as anybody in the country. 30 on the season. And now her reached base streak is extended to 25 in a row. Second walk from Kavan. And trouble brewing here in the third with Jennings back behind Jada in the lineup today. Flew out to right her first time up. Riding an eight game hitting streak into this one. Tied for seventh all time and runs batted in. One more would bump her past Stacy Chambers. Kavan running into a bit of a jam right here. Tip typically doesn't run a whole bunch because they'd rather not get out caught stealing exactly. and hit a two run home run instead of a solo home run. And to run themselves out of innings, <laughs> exactly. Solo home run by Ella Parker in the nine spot in the lineup to lead off the inning for the Sooners. Jennings slices that the opposite way. Maloney has it. One down. A couple of fly outs to right for Tiare today. And next up is Alyssa Brito, walked back in the first. When we talked to Mike White before the series, uh, job number one was to prevent the big innings. They've done that for the most part. Brito smacks that right back up the middle. Two on with one out. Activity out in the bullpen. That's Estelle Check on the left, Mac Morgan on the right. Both have made appearances already in the series. Morgan, the starter on Friday night for Coach White. Kinsey Hansen in the fourth spot in the lineup. First pitch swinging, got under it. Two down. Oklahoma's being very aggressive first yep. pitch, knowing that Tegan Kavan has been around the zone early in the counts. They're hunting pitches, and Kinsey looking inside on that one still gets jammed. So just the timing a little bit off, just missed it. Otherwise, that might have broken a window, building across the street and left. Here's Riley Boone, pop to short in the second. Well, here are their numbers, game one and game two, first pitch swinging and taking. A lot more first pitch swinging in the loss last night. Boone holds, one and one.
Chance to add to the lead right here with Coleman and Brito aboard. Another fly ball. Boone frustrated with the pop up. Ends the threat. Headset with us. Patty, what was the message to your team coming in today after the loss last night? Just response. I mean, that's what we're good at. And they, we haven't been pressed like this for a while. So what are we going to look like after a loss? Um, energy, focus, leadership, all those things we're looking for today. And Coach, how important is a series like this against Texas coming up in the future, Oklahoma State, to have these high pressure type of environments? Yeah, we need it. We love it. We need to learn to play in it. We need to feel that pressure and know how to respond to it. So it's it's good for us, definitely. Thank you, Patty. Thanks you. Guys. We appreciate the time. Thank you. And uh, the uh, loss Saturday night to Texas held to one run for the first time in 98 games. I mean, that's how good they've been. Also, how good Lali Gutierrez and that defense was. Snapped a 40-game Big 12 uh, win streak. And it's the earliest in four years that they've suffered a second defeat. I mean, come on now. 56 and four. 59 and three, 61 and one last year, and now 35 and two to start this season. The previous three all ended up with championships. They're the favorites to do it again. Oh, and Coach Gasso, she knows these are the environments that help her team when they get to Oklahoma City in the Women's College World Series. She wants this. She tries to emulate this in practice every single day because she knows this is the pressure cooker this team is gonna be in to try to win a national championship year in and year out. You need something you're going to tap into, and that's not what they've gotten a lot of in the past. And they've had to come from behind in a few more games yeah. this year. They've now got double the amount of losses than they did last year. But, I mean, she's been happy with, okay, how are you going to respond? Speaking of responding, the last time they lost two games in a row was that shortened season in 2020 to two different opponents. The last time they lost two in a row to the same team was 2019. And that was at the World Series to UCLA. And the same opponent in the same season in Big 12 play, 2011. So the response has always been there. Maxwell, quick out of the circle and the spin to make the play. Yeah, and back to your point, Beth, that was Missouri. Well, they were still back in the Big 12 before they left for the SEC. Speaking of the SEC, of course, that's where these two are headed next year, both OU and Texas. Look at those numbers. I mean, that's ridiculous. And for Texas, what a big day today for them to try and win a series against the Sooners for the first time since 2009. Back to the top of the order here in Bell Dayton. Five strikeouts to the first nine for Kelly Maxwell. One thing that you see from Kelly Maxwell is that she's going to live in that 63 to 66 miles an hour, which is really where that ball, that spin speed can take off. She doesn't throw through her spin, so her pitches don't typically flatten out. During this stretch, of course, they they won the title behind G. Juarez in the circle in 2021, the last two years with Jordy Ball, who then up and transferred to Nebraska. Unfortunately for Jordy, got injured the first game of the year this season, out for the season. But there's, is, G, is that G in there? G, one of their assistants now. Ground ball to second base. Torres, two down. They've had a great legacy of left-handers that have been All-Americans and have won national championships. Patty loves her lefties. Got another good one here. Paige Parker with a couple. Kehlani Ricketts with that crop duster. And the OG, mm. Jennifer Stewart, OG. back in 2000, their first national championship. She started it all. Yeah, that was back in the day when it was a single game championship. Oh, yeah. 
I believe we're in the 19th year now, believe it or not, of the championship series since that first yeah. one with Sam Finley in Michigan. Beating UCLA in uh, epic Jelly. fashion. Yeah. That's a rope. Coleman going back and makes the catch up against the wall. Parker solo home run in the third inning. The numbers today for Kavan and three innings of work, the three hits. A couple of strikeouts, but also a couple of walks. Yeah. They ended up not doing any damage. Hardest hit balls have come from the freshman of Oklahoma, not just Ella Parker, but Cassidy Pickering, who's leading it off right now, smoked a double back in the second. She has shown throughout the weekend just the power and the patience. And something to break into this lineup as a freshman. There's two of them, but what they do is they don't chase. Look for pitches they can drive, and they do just that. Well, the pitching has been awfully good from both sides, and out of the ordinary for the Oklahoma offense, which is uh, averaging nine runs a game, the best batting average and OPS in the game. Texas has made it tough on them so far. Game three of the series, even at one apiece. Well, we know how good Oklahoma's offense is, but you know, kudos to Texas in this series. Look at the batting average against for the season versus Texas, just a 255, just three extra base hits, more strikeouts than walks. You know, this is a Texas team that has, I believe, second lowest ERA in the country behind Oklahoma coming into this series. So you knew this was gonna be a battle for both these offenses mixing up against very good Pitching staffs. Pickering fouls that one away. That's, that's why I feel like the series has really come down to the defense. I mean, both sides. I saw that great catch by, by Coleman, but we've seen both sides have to field the ball, and we're seeing a ton of balls being put in play. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Full count. into the capacity crowd. Love the seats in the outfield too. I encourage all these programs to do that. So cool when a home run ball lands in the fans. Ball four for Pickering. That's the third one from Kavan. Hey, Wednesday, number five, Texas takes on Texas State. That's at 4.30 Central, LeGrand. A lot of good programs in Texas. North Texas is strong this year as well. And bet to your point, third walk of the game for Kavan. She had only 13 coming into today's game, but that's also what Oklahoma does yep. on the year. 192 base on balls for Oklahoma to just 95 strikeouts. Oh, on the count to Sydney Sanders. And on those 192 walks, 74 of those have scored. 74 runs on base on balls. That's a huge number. 74 of the 92? Huh, wait. 192. 192. Calculator. Yes, America, this is me looking for my calculator. I would say 42 percent-ish, something like that. All right, and I was a little high. 37%? That's okay. We're we going to round up. We can up round up to 42%. <laughs> Sanders out in front with a rock. Yeah, they're tough to strike out, and uh, they, they're really good plate discipline. There you see the numbers. That's the most walks in the one. And typically, most clubs, it's reversed. They will have. Especially with a power hitting team. Yes, a lot more strikeouts than walks. But again, it's just the efficiency of this offense and implementing the offense. Swing and a miss. 
Sanders defies our narrative, guys, but uh, we're going to give the credit to Kavan on that one. One down. Tegan Kavan picks up her third strikeout of the game. She's going to go to the outer corner. It's a curveball, and it's just going to run away from Sanders, expanding the zone. And that's really what you have to do against this Oklahoma team. You have to pitch to the shadow zone and hope that you can get them to swing through it. The shadow zone? I like the river. It's another way of saying, you know, outside of the... Uh, the strike zone, the shadow zone. You coined the phrase, the river. Are now, you now trying to create a new <laughs> shadow zone. That's like a stat. That is that, good. Let's no, see. but there's stats on the shadow, shadow zone. Shadow zone, okay. Well, okay. And so somebody else has already come up with that. It could have been Smitty. It might have been. Well, since the eclipse is coming tomorrow, <laughs> I just thought I, <laughs> I, thought I would. Let's hope for uh, all the folks along the path, including here in Texas, that uh, it doesn't cloud over. A lot of people in town between the Ooh, yeah. Country Music Awards and the Eclipse. And the softball. And the softball. That's like a duh. It's a given. It's mm -hmm. kind of why you're here. Mm -hmm. Then you stay yeah. for everything else. Mm -hmm. That's why we're here. Mm -hmm. Torres, 1-1. One, one. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 reach oh, for oh. it. Oh, nice grab by the guy in the Kavan jersey, no less. It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> How about that? He's got the Kavan T right there. Yeah, I, I stayed seated because this I mean, was like the, 10 the one, feet from The us. one outfielder doesn't even dive for it. Well, like, come on. I mean, it's not even in the screen. That was reachable. <laughs> <laughs> I lay out for that. <laughs> that I thought I had go, go gadget arms. <laughs> to I speak to them. If I lay out, will you catch me? Yeah, we would have held your arm ankles. Well, that's a lie. Here's a one, two to <laughs> Torres. Oh, reached for it, but got a piece. I'm curious with Ella Parker on deck. Estelle check and Mac Morgan in the bullpen ready to go if Parker faces Kavan a second time. I think left on left, maybe they go with check against Parker because I would not let Kavan face her again. Yeah, Estelle check was uh, strong in game one. She came in in relief, pitched two and two thirds innings, did not give up a hit. She had two strikeouts. Well, what was great for Mike White, too, is not only do you pick up the win, but you don't have to throw a lot of arms to get it yesterday with yeah. Gutierrez going the distance. So he's got options going all out today. Nice work. <laughs> That's why you bring the glove to the yard. Little oh. spillage, but not much. <laughs> not much. Oh, just nice. Keep on going You've like it didn't it. even happen. You've earned it. Gives it to the young man next to her. Great uh -huh. taste, less filling, nice catch. <laughs> yeah, wow. over, the rail over the rail and did not drop the beverage. I mean, wow. Impressive. And there's a kid right there to, oh, look at that, nice. It's quality family time at the ball yard today. <laughs> Oops, that may have hit something. He's fouled off six in a row. One's in play. Scott to second for one over to first. They'll get the lead runner. Two down. Texas has already turned two double plays in this series. They've had 16 on the season. Roll this ground ball. It's a little bit slow developing, but good job by Mia Scott over to Leanne Good to Stewart. But Torres gets down the line. And She's going to be mid to high 60s. She's got that curve ball she can throw on both sides of the plate. She will elevate with the rise ball. And all of this pitching staff for Texas is good at mixing speeds. And that's it right there at 55 miles an hour. Locating that pitch low in the zone, picking up a first pitch strike. Stays away outside from Parker. That home runner's sixth of the season. 35 RBI for Ella. Oh. 
That's her seventh home run. Two and two the count here. Parker pulls that one through the right side. Two on with two outs, and here comes Coleman and Jennings again. Well, what a move by Patty Gasso to put Parker from the two spot down to the nine spot and pass the bat twice here. Well, and her biggest thing was responding to a loss. She wanted to put all the seniors at the top of the lineup, so that's why she's got them one through five. Pitch up and in. 0-2. Oh, see how aggressive she is right now. She wants to hit. Even though Jada Coleman will take her walks, there are certain at-bats you can tell that it's almost impossible to walk her. You can throw it anywhere. In fact, that last pitch wasn't even a strike. <laughs> she is swinging, hacking. She's feeling it. Held up. Coleman on the season, 478 with runners in scoring position. Ooh that might have been a double down the line. Yeah. Two and two. Way and that'll drift into the bullpen. The whole dugout was telling them that she had room, Bella Dayton, because they wanted her to catch it so bad. Yeah. She didn't have room. That wasn't very nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just shows how much that ball was spinning coming off the end yeah. of the bat. Yep. Right, it's going to that opposite field, so it's always going to run to the line. Oh, I think that fooled both the umpire and Jada Coleman. That looked like a great pitch on the inner half. It wasn't even close, actually. Yeah. This isn't even a corner. This is white. Yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, man. Full count now. Lined out to center, and right there is Henry. Coach White, we didn't get a chance to talk to you post game, but kind of the overall feeling after the big win and then coming in and kind of regrouping coming into today. Yeah, it was big for us. We had a really good crowd here last night. It was a lot of momentum, a lot of noise, and I think we were able to capture on it. And we want to do the same thing today. And But the hard part is getting somebody on base and getting that run. So that's what we need to do. Yeah, and Coach, so what do you need to do? What adjustments against Maxwell? Oh, she's just really tough. I mean, she throws the kitchen sink up there at you, you know. <laughs> so you got to be prepared for anything and everything. And they've got a great defense. So we, we got to work hard. I mean, you know, the thing is we came back late in the other game the other night, so we got to keep fighting right now. All right, we're going to watch 345 come up for you, Mike. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Kelly Maxwell got the win on Friday night and uh, trying to steer it in that direction again today. And she will see the heart of the order. Scott Atwood and Martinez do up for the second time through. Mia, a base hit, the lone hit so far for Texas today. Her first time up. Just an incredible atmosphere here. Mm -hmm. the growth of the game continues. The fan base is so strong. Sanders able to knock it down and make the play one down. Maxwell's been strong. Ten swing and miss on those five strikeouts so far in this game, but none in that third inning. So second time through the lineup, see if Texas can continue to make some adjustments against Maxwell. Ten swings and misses today through 11 batters faced. Ground ball to Jennings. Two down. Her former team, by the way, the Pokes taking the series against Houston with a win today, 10-2. to two. Tennessee took the series against Georgia. Duke winning the series with North Carolina. 
big weekend around the country. Mm -hmm. Here comes Vivi. Gets hit by the pitch. There's a rule a lot of folks would like to see change. Got to at least make an attempt to get out of the way. The other one is, uh, what are we going to do with the runners leaving bases early uh, situations that we've Holy seen uh, reversed in review the last mm -hmm. two nights? I mean, first of all, don't leave the base early. That would be the first, the first option. That's the first option. Yeah, that's the first. Well, I think part of it is the intent of the rule. And I think the, the rule was put into play to keep base stealers from leaving early, give catchers an opportunity to throw them out, or leaving from a bag on a tag up. I think that should be the intent. Maybe you just limit it to those two scenarios. One out of Stewart. Biggest hit of Katie Stewart's life yeah. was last night, a double off of the wall, got taken away because of this. Runner well, I mean, it wasn't even close. Yeah. Like. Left like. <laughs> So off the wall, that hit gets taken off. She ended up flying out to end the inning. Two runs taken off the board. There's a deep fly ball. Back it goes at the base of the wall, off the top of the wall, and gone. That popped back into the field, and Katie Stewart. Texas. A costly hit by pitch for Maxwell gets a runner on. And then Stewart sends it out. How about the freshman? We saw Ella Parker on the reverse. Love the bat drop at the end. She knew it right away. And by the way, We've talked about it all weekend long. She's broken two windows out in left field in BP in that building across the street. She was due the hit taken away last night, the double off the wall opposite field. She makes this one close play there in left field, but it was out. Sixth home run of the year and just the sixth home run that Kelly Maxwell has given up this year for the Sooners. Looked like it bounced off the scaffolding there just outside the fence and came back into the field to play. A two-run home run for Katie Stewart. That scores her and Vivi Martinez. There you see it goes into the crowd. Well, and someone out there with a the net. Oh, it hit the scaffolding. Yeah. yeah. And it came right back. I hope he fishes better. So we're back at it now with Leanne Good in the seventh spot in the lineup. After Maxwell got the first two batters out, she hit Vivi Martinez with a pitch, and then Katie Stewart with a two-run swat. Jennings, side retired. Plate. That's what Oklahoma was questioning. Thank goodness they didn't call it back. Tiari Jennings. Followed by Alyssa Brito and Kinsey Hanson. Held a one run in last night's game for the first time in 98 games. Got to go back to the start of last season. And now Texas has them at one so far again today. Jennings has flown out to Ashton Maloney in right field twice, and another pop-up. One down. And the thing that we typically see from Oklahoma is the consecutiveness, right? The back-to-back -back hits, the walk, and then the hit. And Texas pitching staff has been good at limiting that. Melissa Brito has walked and singled.
sitting on a pitch. Yeah. Mika was all over that pitch. He's coming in almost a hitter. First time this group is seeing Estelle Check today, who came on in relief of Kavan in the fourth. Brito floats one to the right side, back on the grass is good, two down. Well, Leanne Good went back on that ball very well. Off the bat, it looked like it potentially could meet the green, but good first step, drop step. It's where it's important, right, Jess, for middle infielders to almost look like outfielders in their footwork going back on the ball. Exactly right, that drop step is everything. No back pedals. Here's Kenzie Hansen. This could be the last time that the heart of the order comes to the plate. Well, and I imagine Mike White, this isn't the last of pitching changes, too, that we've seen. He's got two more pitchers in the bullpen. And of course, Clutch Kinsey delivers with another base hit. She's so good. So good when the game's on the line. So good. Tying run aboard. Go ahead at the plate now for Riley Boone with a couple of pop-ups. After reaching her first two times in the series, she's 0 for 5 since. Oklahoma just 2 for 11 today with runners on base. A couple of nice curveballs on the outer half from Estelle Home run. And freshman Caden Henry will lead it off. One down. Eight, nine, and then the top. Whole lot going on in this one. Oklahoma, they have not lost a Big 12 series since 2011. They have not lost a series to Texas since 2009. Those will both come to fruition as the score stands right now. Asher Maloney being super honest. Home plate umpire just asked her, did that hit you? And she said no. <laughs> but nowadays with review, the whole crowd wanted it to be a hit by pitch. Well, hey, when you're coming in with a 10 game hitting streak, yeah. You want to stay up there. Even if it did. Just no. <laughs> I'd rather swing here. Grounded out her first time. First time through the lineup for Texas. Five strikeouts. Second time through the lineup. So far, Maloney being the last of those nine. Have yet to strike out, and they have that two-run shot. But that's Tegan Kavan, the starter, back out in the bullpen. She could re-enter. Matchups, that's what you do at this point. Oklahoma's lineup, so many tools for Mike White, all his pitching. And that's what we're seeing more and more in the game today. I mean, Kelly Maxwell going the length, what we're seeing Friday night from her right now. But most schools use a staff depending on where they're at in the lineup and who they're facing. And because you can bring in her too, it's a lot of, a lot of fun you can have. 2-2 Two -two pitch. And a strikeout for Maxwell. That's her first since the second inning, two down. There was a time not too long ago where you would throw your ace on Friday, on Saturday, on Sunday, three complete games. That sounds and like you're, my And you're out of town, Michelle Smith. <laughs> exactly. uh, but uh, times have changed. Hey, or, or a doubleheader in a day. Yes, shoot. 15 innings. How dare you take me out? Right. What? <laughs> Do you want to lose? 
<laughs> Different game. Of course, no one hit back then, so it was very good. Oh, hey now. <laughs> Bella Dayton back to the top for Texas. that gets away from Kelly from time to time. Right, the battle for Bella Dayton. Mm -hmm. She is crowding mm -hmm. the plate on Maxwell. She's got to have a lot of trust then in her own instincts because that curveball that will come at that front hip of hers might almost hit her. Oh, what a beautiful day for softball here in Austin. Home folks hoping they're seeing some history. It's the toughest ticket in town, and if you don't have one, bring your cooler. There's a grove of trees out there, right. out beyond the bullpen, down the right field line. Folks hanging out, finding some shade. That's out beyond the left field fence, a popular spot as well. Dayton looking for a gap and finds it. Bella around second, thinking a three, and she's headed that way, sliding in safely. Triple of the season for Bella. And just the fourth all year against Oklahoma. Did you see that where that pitch was? It almost hits the ground. Riley Boone, because she lays out, which I love, by the way, but this is what caused it to be a triple. I mean, her barrel almost hits the ground to get underneath this to hit it in the gap. Only the third triple surrendered for Kelly Maxwell in her career. And it was a pitcher's pitch. Yeah. Jolie Mitchell in the two spot. Hard hit ball her last time up. A liner out to center field that chased Jada Coleman all the way back to the fence and Jada had to climb the wall to make the catch. Fly ball down the line, foul. Four of their six runs in this series scored with two outs. Three for seven today with two outs. And that one's down the line foul. Sabrito, man, she gets so fired up. I mean, she thought that was an inning ending ground ball. She was mad at the umpire for calling it foul. Don't you know? <laughs> One, two. Checked it. Two and two. Dustin Douglas, Mike Burwell, Robert Gonzalez in blue today. Yep, good hope. Mitchell off the end of her bat, and that will trickle foul. Oh, that could have been trouble if that stayed fair. Quite a knuckler. Almost like a two-out squeeze. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Full swinging squeeze. 
off the top of the bat. Crazy spin. A change up anything off speed is going to come. Foley Mitchell way out in front of that last one. This is high full count through the change up. Up. Lucky it wasn't a little bit lower. Two count, runner at third, Jolie Mitchell at the plate, facing Kirsten Deal. Mitchell got under it. Jennings back on the grass will give way to Pickering. Well, and it just shows Texas with that number two ERA in the country coming in behind Oklahoma. Down to the bottom of the order for the Sooners, their freshman Cassidy Pickering and Ella Parker have three of their five hits today, including the Parker home run. She's due up fourth, Pickering leading things off here. Trying to avoid the back-to-back -back losses and a series loss in Big 12 play. Last series loss was 2011. Last time they lost a series to Texas was 2009. That's how good they have been for so long. The, I mean, the last decade, six national championships, eight trips to the finals in the last 11 years for the Sooners. Little trickler to Mia Scott, one down. There's Sydney Sanders, grounder to third and a strikeout. Estelle check on in relief and in the fourth inning. Got Sitlali, Gutierrez, Mac Morgan, warm in the bullpen. This might be an all hands on deck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've also seen Kavan out there. There she is, the starter who could come back. Yeah, we're really seeing both clubs do this. You know, call on that bullpen. Mm -hmm. Mike White thought he might need to use his entire staff to grab a game in this series, but after Gutierrez went the distance last night, He's got an entire staff to try and take the series as Sanders gets hit by a pitch, the tying run on base for the second inning in a row. And it worked a couple of curveballs on the inner half that were called balls. That one elevated and gets Sanders. Sanders lifted for a pinch runner. She can re-enter, and that pinch runner is Maya Bland, the Sooner who got thrown out at the plate to end the game last night in the top of the seventh inning. Third free pass from Texas pitchers. The other ones have not hurt them. Three walks and a hit by pitch. Four free passes. Alina Torres, over for two. Sooner righties back and off the plate. It's Texas done a really good job of coming inside. So again there, even though she's a good length off the plate. Torres snagged it first in a double play. Katie Stewart with the glove work. Three, four, five. 
coming up for Texas. Avery Hodge is on defensively here for Oklahoma at second base. Hannah Core out in left field. Scott singled, grounded out. Oklahoma took the lead. In the third inning, the Ella Parker solo home run, and then Texas out in front with a two-run home run from Katie Stewart in the fourth. Fly out here for Scott, one down. Reese Atwood, followed by Vivi Martinez. Parker, Coleman, and Jennings, by the way, do up in the seventh. Last chance for Oklahoma. So they'll have their All-Americans ready to go. Trying to rally. Starting. Reese Atwood, soft. She has been very good at the first 16 games. 10 home runs, her last 20, just two. She's cooled off a little bit. And that's one of the things she wasn't doing early in the season. She wasn't chasing pitches out of the zone until there's just a little bit of pressure. That's a high pitch. That's probably a ball, something that she was not attacking unless it was inside, which she does hit very well. 1-1 one, one pitch. Two one to Atwood. Three and one. Atwood smashes one back to the track to the base of the wall and caught by Riley Boone. Two down. Oh, Kirsten Deal was not getting the pitches down in the zone, which is her bread and butter, so she has to bring this ball up into the wheelhouse of Reese Atwood. She gets a little bit too much underneath it. I thought this was out off the bat, but we have not seen the ball fly like we've seen the last two nights. Day game, wind kind of blowing in a little bit. Kept that one in the park. Here's Vivi Martinez. She'll take first. Second time she's been hit today. That'll bring up Katie Stewart with a runner on board. The last time Vivi got hit by a pitch, Katie Stewart hit one out. Two run shot, stands as the game winner right now. That was two outs as well. That's how Texas has been getting it done. That was off the starter, Kelly Maxwell. This is her first look at Kirsten Deal for Oklahoma. And how about the mentality of Katie Stewart? She had that big hit going the opposite way last night, was called back because the runner left early, right? Not to toward, still comes out here today and puts a big swing on a ball to get it out of the yard. Doing their damage with two outs in this series.
Oh, we got a tape change too on the chest protector of Kinsey Hansen going horizontal with the blue. It is 100%, I think. You know, the, the focus of the pitcher, but also the, where they need to be pitching. Went from vertical to horizontal because that's exactly Kirsten Deal, drop ball pitcher, below the tape. That one was not. No, because you get two tape and above, especially. I'll tell you what, that Katie Stewart, <laughs> she wants that pitch back. That's not a pitch you want to foul back. That means you're just missing it. As a pitcher, that's always a flashing red light. Warning. 1-1 one, one from Deal. Stewart chops that one. In foul territory is Sanders. Side retired, Lang, Ella Parker. Solo shot, a beautiful job actually going to pitch low and away. Drove it out of here in about two seconds. She's moved all around this lineup now in the nine hole and she leads it off. That is their lone run today. Katie Stewart, a two run home run for Texas with the lead. Of course that Oregon team that did it to them was coached by Mike White of Texas. Estelle Check has been fabulous. 17 batters faced, has given up just two hits in her relief work in this series. Well, Parker was all over the last one. Remember, she got a hit against Check, who came in to face Parker. That's the first batter she saw coming out of the pen. If Texas is going to do it, they're going to have to beat the best because Coleman and Jennings are coming up next. Two of the best hitters in Oklahoma history. They have only reached once on a walk for Coleman. They're 0 for 5 otherwise today. Everything has been away to Parker, and she was almost leaning on that last one. A check can come inside. Or low and slow, one or the other. Or a different look. Two and two. Parker wasn't phased on that. It's a good take. That's in play. Martinez back to make the catch. One down. Jaya Coleman. Top hitter in the Big 12 coming into the weekend. Slices that one out to left. Two down. Last chance now for the Sooners. It's T.R.A. Jennings. Swing's been under the pitch all three times today. Three flyouts. from Estelle Check. Two and one. As it stands, it's the lowest scoring series for the Oklahoma offense in 12 years. What a job by the Texas pitchers. Jennings, not done yet. Base hit TRA. And they've got the tying run aboard. Brito is one for two, a single and a walk today.
50% of her hits on the season are for extra bases. Takes a look at strike one. Declare. 